Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Yes, indeed. Hey, One Nut Wonder, we coming through okay? Fantastic. Uh, actually, Engineer Mike had to earn his money tonight. Apparently, a uh, amp had been blown in here. I guess when Drew uh, spilt his bong late late in the show last night, he must have shorted something out. Nice. Engineer Mike got in here like uh, Mike Giver and uh, patched together things, and I sound kind of weird in my own head, but uh, I guess it's coming through out there in Radio Land. So uh, God bless Engineer Mike. All right, don't putz around us. Oh, wait a minute. That's good. Oh. Okay, Drew. All right. Oh, that education's paying off. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191-1-800-568-3191. That is the phone number. The fax number, 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And tonight, our very special guest is Slayer. Very hardcore, this group. Seem, seem pretty even-tempered and mild-mannered here. Well, that's what I've sort of been, I've been figuring out the, uh, the crazier your, mu- your music is and the crazier you are on stage. The nicer the, person you are. Eh? The, the nicer the person you are when you're off. You're nice. mellower. It's, nice. it's, um, it's therapeutic, I guess. Yeah, it's like cathartic. You yeah. get up there, you, you uh, bust a few amps, yeah. you urinate on the crowd. You, uh, you know, beat the crap out of a couple of miners, and you get it off your chest. You feel better. You can relax in your off hours. It's like me. I was saying, maybe we ought to put you out there on stage. <laughs> I get up here, I beat up on a few people over the radio, I have a good time, and then I'm Mr. Mellow. Actually, that was a little sampling of me being mellow. <laughs> that 10 seconds of dead air. Drew, you ready to go to the phone? Let's go, please. All right. Nikki. What's up? 24, you're on Loveline. Thanks. Hey, guys. I got a problem. Yeah. Maybe you can help me, Adam. Uh, I met this girl about six months ago at a feature at a strip club, and we started dating, and one thing led to another. And, you know, we've become pretty good friends, and through that, we have decided to get married. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, pretty right. good friends. We decided to get married. All right. right. So l- let me let me uh, let me get the order straight. Translate One minute you're stuffing singles into her g-string, and the next minute you're taking nuptials. Exactly. All right. I mean, and I, I really don't know what to do because I asked my friends and they give me a, a biased opinion because, uh, you know, they like what she does, but then again, they don't have to live with her and you know, see her on screen with her. All right. Is, it, it, all right. Totally nude or topless? Oh, she's uh, she was just doing a feature, which is a uh, you know totally nude, topless and bottomless. Oh, you mean she's making a porn movie? Yeah, that's what she does. Oh, okay. I thought for some reason I thought you met her at a uh, at a bar. I did, but she was doing a feature. All right. Well, I'm. You know what? I'm. I'm not uh, Yuri Geller here. I'm not clairvoyant. I can't tell if you say you met a girl at a strip bar. I'm. I'm. I'm going to think she's a stripper, Nikki. Okay. But she's a porn star. She's yeah. both. Exactly, and, and I don't. I'm like totally confused about the whole thing. Nikki, what do you mean? Go, we were good friends, and then we're going to get married. What, yeah. What? I mean, it's it's like we date. How long have you been dating? Six months. And and you're just good friends. I mean, it started off as that, but then, like after the first month, we become intimate and. Uh huh. And does she know you're planning on marrying her? <laughs> yeah, we talked about it. It was her idea because she's trying to stay in here from the Philippines, right? <laughs> she doesn't want to be deported. No. Nah. It has nothing to do with that. No. She she just thought it'd be a good idea to marry a uh, good old boy. Yeah. Who talks real slow. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, she'll go on with her, her career. What What is her screen name? Caitlin Ashley. Wait a minute. I've heard of that. Have you? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't Charlie Sheen, is it? No. Nick, you sound a little slow to be running in that fast lane. I know, but see, it's just the front. I'm not really that slow. It's just my, just my talk. Oh, it's like we are talking about with Slayer. Do what, man? All right, you weren't listening to the top of the show, but that's all right. Nikki. What? Marry her. You have my blessing, right, Drew? Maybe your blessing, but not mine. Why not? Well, she's a career woman. Well, how about Slayer's blessing? Do I get theirs? Absolutely. I will give you, I will pre-bless you from Slayer. 
Okay. I'm I'm just uh I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the guys from Slayer would be okay with Nikki marrying a porn star. Uh, where can you? How do you start with Nikki? I mean, he's getting defensive just by virtue of our asking him questions. Uh, yeah. How can you give him anything? Any feedback? Uh, didn't it, it sound a little bogus? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've heard of that porn yeah. star. Yeah, they they date like uh, Cato and guys like that. Then I'm gonna go out with the uh, Nikki from the Sticks. Well, it's a little rock and roll uh, play yeah, on I mean, words I mean, there. Obviously, you know, it's like any relationship. He should be being very careful before he thinks about getting married. Right. Well, bogus. Tom, 25, you're on Love Line. Yeah, yeah, how you doing? Good. Okay, um, um, all right, uh, been dating this woman here, and uh, I'm white, first of all, and, uh, you know, she, she's kind of black, and uh, my, my friends and, you know, my, my some of my family members to- always told me, always have this thing like, uh, you know, if you ever bring home a black woman, don't bother coming home or stuff like that. All right, let me just get something straight. What parts of her are black? Oh, I guess all of her. Oh, all of her? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me write that down. Okay, go ahead. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, I've kind of been caught around town, you know, hanging out with her and stuff like that. And, you know, by a couple people. But, you know, I'm pretty known for, you know, I'm not, I'm not a racist or anything, really. But, you know. But your family is. Yeah, that too. And some of my friends, you know, we, we make a lot of jokes and we always say, you know, we never date outside of our race, but, you know, I guess I've kind of, uh, strayed away from that group. You know, this, this, you know, this woman, she's kind of different and all. And other than that, me being white and she's black, she told me I was the best sex I've ever had. So. Really? That's got to count for oh, something. You got to be hung like a mule, Tom. Well, I'd like to think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Now listen, Tom, where are you calling from? Alabama? Uh, Arizona. Arizona? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. They weren't going to have the Super Bowl there a couple of years back because right. they, they wanted to get rid of Martin Luther King Day. Right. Or not recognize it. Uh, so, poor Tom. Tom. Poor yeah. Tom. Poor Tom. I have a... a dream. It's that you uh, disregard all all the naysayers and go ahead and follow your bliss and your penis and marry this black woman and make an honest or, or, woman or, or, out of her. I never said nothing about getting no, married. No, right. he just wants to be he just wants to stay involved with her and I, I think, was still in the stripper mode. I understand. But that that's fine. I mean I, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's 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 a hard road, you know, you have a lot to put up with from society at large. We I've had people call in over the years who talk about how difficult it is to to deal with interracial marriages. In fact, I remember a couple times we've had callers who were themselves the children of interracial marriages who were being aggressively um, uh, uh, guided, oh, crapped upon, no, guided by no. their parents away from any any yeah, cross. Yeah, how do I go out and tell everybody? You know, announce to everybody that I'm dating. It's this none woman. of their business. They're not going to want to be my friend anymore. That's oh, re- that's ridiculous. That's recoculous. It's recoculous. Um, it nobody is. cares. People don't care what you're doing. All these people do. His family might, and you know, maybe she's friends too. They're not going to want to hang out with me anymore. Oh, yeah. that's ridiculous! You don't have to announce to them who you're no. dating. Well, then you're hanging out with a bunch of bigots, Tom. Maybe it's time you chose your friends a little better. Uh, you understand? Uh, I mean, if your friends will not hang out with you because you're swinging with this black chick, then it means they're racist, and if they're racist, you shouldn't be hanging out with them. So it solves the problem. Well, at first I thought, you know, when I when I picked up this woman, I, I met her in a bar, by the way. You know, and, you know, how things always start off in places like that, you know. First, I hooked up with her, you know, because she was a good cook and stuff like that. And I thought it was first black one I was with. But, you know, she's actually a decent human being. You Tom, know? Tom, you, you get a little bit of that kind of racist thinking yourself there. Be yeah. Careful, well, we all know the blacks can't cook, yeah. bro. I mean, that's that's been documented. Uh, I recommend the fried chicken. It's oh, Tom, cut it out. You have seen the Aunt Jemima bottle, haven't you, Drew? Put it in my hole. I can't, <laughs> all right. I can't Tom's to bogus. Crap. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That is ridiculous. All right, so we got two, I guess, bogus calls to start off with. Did uh, we not? All right, we're moving forward. We're like a juggernaut. Mary, 15, you're on Love Line. Hi. Um, I've got a question probably mostly for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like a few days ago, um, my boyfriend and I, we were, we were kind of making out heavily, and um, he fingered me, and um, I think he ejaculated um, but I'm not sure, but it felt like it, you know, because I, I had my hand down there. So um, I asked him about it, and um, he said that he didn't think he did. Um, All right, that's lying. <laughs> yeah. Believe me. <laughs> he either knows he did, he did or he didn't. Did he do a victory lap around does the house? Know, does he know for sure? Wait, were you Would cl- he know if he did or not? Yes. Were you clothed? Well, at the moment... 
it was taken off, but I, I don't get the yeah. scene. I don't get. The he scene. would know. He would know. And if he wouldn't, if he didn't know, he should kill himself. Okay, Drew, but, you'd kill yourself if but, you didn't know when you orgasm, wouldn't you? He should know. <laughs> okay, but maybe okay. Say what? Say that maybe he just said that just because because he was embarrassed. Yeah. And right. So, um, I, for the most part, I'm, I wasn't really worried about it, but I haven't gotten my period yet, and I was due like a couple of days ago, and so I know it's not like extremely late yet, but I mean, should I be really worried if it? not coming any day now. Well, look, first of all, just being worried about not having your period is often sufficient to cause you not to have your period, just that anxiety. Uh, but I don't understand where... where <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm having a little trouble right. with the anatomy here. What? Where was the, the event occurred? In his pants, right? Yeah. Okay. So how would it have gotten to you? Via his fingers, right? Yeah, that's what where, I was... But it was... It, it, where were his... How, how did his hands get there? His hands get to me, or no, to himself. You understand? How did his hands get in his pants? Well, he put my hand down there. It's your hand. Yes. So, right, but, see my problem, Adam? Yeah, I understand. Here, I'm looking at a at a big chart, and it's not making nothing is lining up. Okay, he took his hand and he put my hand down there, so his hand was down there at one time. All right. Or more than one time, probably. Okay. But. Th just, this is up there with the can I get pregnant from a jacuzzi. Not, right, not, right. Not quite as bad, right. but, but pretty bad. Right. Okay. I very, know, very I've unlikely. I've heard of it. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, there, you, know, you things, know, I've read in a magazine. Look, that asteroids can. had the same situation happen. <laughs> very yeah. unusual. But it, 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 yes, of course, it could happen. But it would be very, very, very unusual. So if I don't get my period, should I be worried? It, if you don't the get it for, for two more weeks, then get a home pregnancy test and see what's going on. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Mary. You'll be fine, I'm sure. All right. See, uh, Drew? See, I can reassure that one. <laughs> Drew? Okay. What if a girl gives... When I can reassure them, I will, right? What if a girl gives oral sex to a guy? Yeah. And then the next day, in the shower, at school, at P.E., belches. Could any of the other girls around her possibly get pregnant? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tom, you're eight feet away from the microphone. All right, get in there. That's Tom and Carrie, both from Slayer, both joining us in the uh, fabulous Love Line studios. Both, uh, where'd you just get from? Denmark? Yeah. Uh, no. Amsterdam. Holland. Amsterdam. Holland. All right, still stoned? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> did you did you swing by the red light district over there? Actually, I ended up walking that way twice. <laughs> really? Yeah, we just ended up there. We were looking in search of a tattoo place once, and one time we were just walking, and there it was. Now, I... Oh, you just stumbled upon it. <laughs> really, yeah. It's right, it's like right in the middle. Like I stumbled into the crack house many years no, ago. No, no, no. It's <laughs> right in the middle of Amsterdam. <laughs> really? Yeah, everything, going anywhere, you tend to cross well, that. Well, Drew, I was going to ask Slayer about the red light district, but perhaps <laughs> we'll ask you, since you are the uh, brothel king. What goes on over there? There is... In, in, institutionalized prostitution. The, the state runs the uh, prostitution organization. It's all legal, and they apparently have regular AIDS t testing and the HIV uh, uh, STD uh, testing. Well, listen to him uh, stammering. I, I, I just <laughs> listen. I, well, you got some when you're no, in I didn't. Amsterdam. No, I didn't. How much? No, I okay, no, you I didn't, didn't. But how much? <laughs> no, I didn't, and I don't know how much. Maybe these guys can tell you. But, right, but you smoke. But, it, it, but it, you can't. You can't miss it. I mean, it's right. It's right at the. Hey, it's, the when, it's what you call window shopping. Yeah, the streets are all yeah, what foot, <laughs> foot traffic, and it's all right there. It's all. all right. So a lot of a uh, lot of Japanese businessmen and those kind of <laughs> types to make your way through. Uh, drug dealers. Really? <laughs> yeah. But you don't have I, to I mean, deal drugs what, I there. Go, I come up and walk down the street, and this guy goes, "Hey, you want something?" Not from you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but is is it all legal over there, Carrie? I don't That's know. A rather personal I don't know. question. You know, I don't do drugs, so um, I, I never got to the point where it's like, hey, how much? <laughs> but but they have the they have the hash dens there. Well, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. easy. But I think these guys are selling more hardcore stuff. And and the hash dens are right in the middle of the red light district as well. Nah, that's everywhere. They're everywhere. Because I'm, I'm planning my next vacation, so I want to kind of get a. Kind of get a good feel for this. Yeah. Did you see a coffee house? That's a spot. So to... I, I need your brain to function for a couple of years, right? <laughs> yeah. Please. All right? You go, oh, come on. A couple of bricks of hash. Once we're done with you, go no. have a good time. I'll tell you where the trouble comes is when I, I keister a few bricks and try to bring them through the airport. That's where the <laughs> that's where the trouble starts. <laughs> keister? Adam uh, is being detained in uh, Amsterdam. He won't make the show for the next eight <laughs> to ten years. All right. So you guys are fresh out of Europe. Yep. You're back here. How long are you in town for? Mm, about a month. 
I think. Uh-huh. And uh, I was talking to Tom before the show. You don't have any dates uh, around town yet. Nothing that we can plug. Mm, no. I think we're going to shoot a video this week, maybe. But really? I don't know if it's going to happen. Do you, need, do you need a bunch of Loveline uh, extras? <laughs> I have no idea, man. I really don't know anything about it. You don't know this. <laughs> we don't know nothing. But it, you guys aren't going to be mincing around in tutus or anything. It's going to be a lot of, a uh, lot of like headbanging, a lot of, a lot of stuff being sacrificed and stuff like that. Uh, see, you don't want to, you don't want to spread rumors, huh? <laughs> you don't want to spread all those rumors. All right. Well, we're going to play a little something off of uh, Undisputed Attitude uh, after the next break. But until then, we're going to get back to the phones. Drew, you got a call lined up? Mm-hmm. All right. You guys help us out. Alex, 17, you're on Love Line with Slayer. Hi. Hey. Hey. Mm. Okay. On Saturday night, I was at a party and I was drinking. I was pretty drunk. And there's this guy here, there. His name was Josh. And we kind of fooled around a little bit. And it just so happens that he is one of my best friend's ex-boyfriends, and I was just really drunk at the time, and I didn't really care. And um, then the next day, my other friend wanted to tell me that um, the girl who was his ex-girlfriend is four months pregnant because she didn't want me to let anybody know that... With with this guy's child? Yeah, with his child. Very nice. All right, do you have any idea what's going on, Drew? This girl was at a party was intoxicated slept with we had, no, had sex I with sleep, i didn't sleep with him okay was it was in f- physically close with a guy who she thought was the ex-boyfriend of her good friend and it turns out that she's not she not only is he not the ex really he is the father of her child okay but alex you didn't really think he was the ex you didn't care you're drunk what the hell right right well i knew that they still saw each other every once in a while but all right so no one's buying the ex story right no, I'm just meaning that they're not, like, going out totally anymore. All right, but you screwed over your friend. Well, it's not really like that. Yeah, but you knew they weren't really broken up. You you weren't thinking of your friend's best interest when you did this. Right. 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 Nor your own, probably. Okay. Really. Uh, no, no, nor worrying about yourself, really, either. I mean, you were talked to you. I mean, this, these, are, these are one of the many consequences that people could suffer from. Even abusing. I'm not saying you're an addict, but you use drugs. Things happen. Well, I don't know. Do you really regret it? Yeah, I feel really bad about it. All right. Now, do you want us to call this friend and straighten everything out? <laughs> Perhaps Drew could give her some uh, prenatal advice. No, she doesn't even know that I know she's pregnant. Uh, All right. Well, we'll keep the pregnancy thing under our hat. Uh, Tom, Carrie, you won't say anything, will you? Nah. Good. I'm still trying to catch up. <laughs> I have no idea where we are either. <laughs> These poor guys have a nine-hour time gap here. <laughs> Jet lag. Alex? Yeah. All right, so what do you want us to tell you? What's your question? Well, I want to know if I should tell her or if I should just kind of keep it, um, like, quiet or what. All right. Don't. All right, here's the deal. Do you think he's going to say anything? No. All right. Then there. Problem solved. You don't say anything. The only re- the only circumstance in which you should say something is when you think he is going to say something, in which case you say, I just wanted to tell you before you heard it from anywhere else. Right? Okay. But if she's not going to hear it from anyone else, then don't say anything. All right. Okay? Okay, and I have um, another question. Oh. You guys were talking, you were talking earlier about some kind of diet thingy. Diet? Or some fan fan diet? Oh, yesterday, last night, yeah. Oh, I just heard that. Um, oh, you're, they're, they're, oh you're, okay. calling, you're calling from the East Coast. All right. Go ahead. Okay. What about the fen fen? All right. I don't care about the fen fen. You're fat. <laughs> You're overweight. Alex, that's, Al- that's what it is. Al- when we come back from the break, I'll address it real quickly, okay? What? The fen fen. It's speed. You, 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 uh, only if you're major chunko, right, Drew? It, only if it's, for me, for my uh, estimation, it's for people who have medically relevant obesity. Who are You're really fat. No, who are really fat. <laughs> Really Drew, fat. stop calling our listeners fat. <laughs> stop dropping my voice in where it doesn't belong. <laughs> you saw his mouth move, didn't you guys? Um, wasn't even looking. Carrie's not seeing much. <laughs> this is, right. Isn't attention. this the smartest place in the world to have a tattoo, though? It really is. Because yeah. if he doesn't like it, grow the hair Yeah, back. let me see. Carrie, let me see your tattoo. <laughs> if you, you know, after you can't you... do the exorcist thing, I mean. All right. Oh, okay. All right. It's, oh, well, wait a minute. I can't figure out. What is that? It's, uh, I'm moving. I'm up. I'm All mobile. Right, I'll help you out. All right, it's a uh, uh, it's a dragon, and uh, it's like some uh, Chinese uh, something. And and, and, uh, and Adam, <laughs> his grandkids, another dragon. His grandkids never have to see that because he'll just grow his hair out, and nobody will know he had a tattoo there. Oh, it is. You can't grow hair, right? What's that? 
You grow hair. Oh, sure. I mean, you choose See? to be bald. There's a little bit right there. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. He's got no problem. All right. When we get back, more about uh, tattooing with Slayer. Hi, this is Bobcat Goldthwait, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Can I go now? Yes, my good friend Bobcat. <laughs> Did I see a cartoon this morning with Bobcat? Oh, that whore, he's all over the place. Yes, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> You've seen him everywhere. I went to his birthday party yesterday. I don't know if it... He, I, hey, can you guys... Oh, we're here with uh, Tom and Carrie, both from Slayer. Tom, guess how old Bobcat Goldthwait is? 41. All right. A pretty pretty good guess there, Carrie. Tom, you uh, want to venture a guess? Forty five. Forty five. That would have been my guess. <laughs> you know, the great thing is, is he listens to this show. I hope he's listening. He turned thirty four yesterday. Ooh, he's high. He's hey, ageless. Sorry, about that. He's, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Well, he's not a woman. He probably uh, don't care. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's no, he is part woman. That's where you're wrong. Oh, that's no, right. it, it's based on the guy's career. I mean, the guy was doing like. The Scrooged movie and no, um, no, no, Police Academy and the Police Academy movies and all yeah. and doing stand up and yep. you, you saw him on like Letterman and stuff you know f- twenty years ago it seemed like and the wow. guy's just turning thirty four so That's amazing yeah so we had start when he was ten sorry we had him on uh, the uh, last week I guess and he said he got started doing stand up when he was like fifteen and was on Letterman when he was nineteen right. and uh, just kicking everyone's butt but uh he's got the life of riley and he had a big party yesterday and all kinds of celebrities and no one cared who i was but um it goes without saying anyway we have a song to play off of um undisputed attitude which is coming out tomorrow right yeah am i right tom yeah 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 it'll be everywhere probably no better than us everywhere and the name of that song is i hate you oh slayer i hate you you can find them at knott's berry farm june 14th through the 18th (laughs) they'll be playing in the happy chipmunk theater (laughs) you guys don't get to do any of those gigs like that do you nah i was asking uh tom if uh they're gonna do any of the legs of uh Lollapalooza or you know because we get a lot of bands in here and a lot of them or, you know, a lot of the summer festivals and things. I know I'm, I'm moving. Tom's making fun of me because my hand's flying all over the place like I got uh, Parkinson's or something. <laughs> but these, these, these tours, they go around the country. Like you're going to give me a complex, please. <laughs> and they pick up different bands along the way. Right. And they do a few cities. Right. But when I posed this question to Tom, he, he said, absolutely not. They don't like us. They're a-holes. They think we're a-holes. Now, didn't you say that? We're not a Lollapalooza kind of band. Right. But why not? Why couldn't you do Lollapalooza? Don't ask me. Would you like to do Lollapalooza? I could arrange it. (laughs) (laughs) You go ahead and try. (laughs) Let me just read uh, something uh, from uh, about uh, Undisputed Attitude from uh, TSOL's Jack Grisham. He uh, reviewed... Uh, Slayer recently. It says, uh, Jesus F, I thought we were hard. This record doesn't just kick ass, it holds it down and Fs it with a broken bottle. <laughs> Listening to this reminded me of the first time I drank a 12er and kicked in some squirrel's head. <laughs> <laughs> So I get I, I don't know where I, where he reviewed this, but I'm guessing it wasn't like uh, the uh, New York Review of Books. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. I thought it was a oh, Christian yeah. Science one. Yeah, it could have been there. <laughs> Who is this guy? All right, relax what, what over command there, of language? You're crying out loud. Oh, true. Come on, the kids eat that stuff like candy. That's a, that's a great endorsement of the of the CD, isn't it? You want to see that? Yeah, been out of the country. Jerry. I haven't seen it yet. All right, I it, I crossed out the rest of the F uh, there, I but you use out. your imagination. <laughs> All right, it's back to the phones we go. Drew, you ready? Yeah. Tim, uh, hey, 20. Hey, Adam. Hey. Tom, Carrie. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Drew. Tim. How you guys doing? Good. We're, we're fine. Get right to it. All right. Well, I will. Um, let's see. <laughs> my problem is um, when I have sex with my girlfriend, um, often, you know, I go for maybe about 20 minutes, and it just it gets a little boring, and to get my orgasm. I'm, I'm absolutely in love with my girlfriend. Really? I, I have to think of other girls. Are you really? Uh, really, I am. Seriously. Because I, I, 
when when we're not having sex, I would not I would not want to be with any other girl. Right. Well, I'm the, I feel the same way about my mom, though, Tim. Do you really? Yes. That's strange. Well, <laughs> we don't we don't often have sex, but when I'm when I'm not often, although today was my birthday, so I got a little something. <laughs> you know, because the times are tight, and you know, be, better better this than something stop, you wrap. But stop. Tim, what I'm saying is, is you can have those feelings. I mean, Drew has those feelings for producer Ann, don't you, Drew? All the time. But you you can still have bad sex or not have sex at all. Okay. So maybe you're you're in love with her, but you're not was, in love you, with her. You know her. what? Though, it, 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 yeah, she, I mean, she's my first. Right. And um, right, right, right. She, she. Just, she just, just Tim, be very careful. Just recognize that sometimes these sorts of symptoms can be hints. That there's something more going on than you are willing to to tell yourself or allow yourself to see. I mean, we, it may not be. It may just be that that's just you know some aspect of your relationship and that's the way you handle it. But it may be that more about the fantasy of the first love and the difficulty one has with giving that up. Yeah. And the pain. The pain that, that that everybody gets to go through. Tim, how long you been going out with her? Well, we've been dating for about a year. I've only been going out with her though. She was dating other people and. Before, with for like the uh, first ten months. Yeah. Okay. We we both we've actually been going out together, just me and her, for about Very exclusive months. for like four days now. So so, so there, months. you sort of said okay when I said that maybe this is something more than you are willing to allow yourself to see. Is that is that the the case? Well, I actually believe that there's there's something into it that I don't understand. And right. I, you know, I really. All right. Let, let's really let's ask our it. guests here with the uh, the jet lag and the. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, fresh off the uh, the uh, brick of uh, whatever they were smoking over there. Okay. You, you guys, you guys have been around the block more than once, Tom Carey. Uh, you, you know what it's like. You're with a woman. You, you you have the feelings. The feeling is good in the head, but not downstairs. Mm-hmm. Meaning, you like the person. You want to like them, but uh, it's, so it's what, not what, happening. But what happens to that relationship is what you should be asking. All right. Guys. What happens to that relationship? I never had that problem. Really? Yeah. I mean. What's the deal? I don't know. I guess I'm pretty perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not. You're not. You're not gay, are you? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. No, we Tom, don't I've never had that. Tom, problem come either. on. You look plenty screwed up. Come on. <laughs> I've had some pretty screwy relationships, but no, I don't think I've ever had any. The sex that. has always been there. It's always oh, been yeah. there. Oh yeah. All right. What's so the shirt say? The shirt says uh, "orgasm donor." <laughs> <laughs> These guys are all class. Tim. Yes. Well, you may want to uh, reevaluate this. Okay. It, don't it, don't be afraid of your feelings. All right. If if it's really not there, listen to that. All okay? right. Okay, and start to kind of cope with that slowly. You may not be able to sort of let that all in all at once, but it may mean that this relationship is not what you think. And let is. me tell you what it's happens. Time, it's time to let it go. Yeah, sometimes that's you usually know, that's often what happens to relationships that you know that have this kind of quality. You're you're in a you're in the middle of a relationship. You think it's going great, and your penis says, "Hey, come here." And you're like, huh, what? Come here. I want to talk to you for a second. And you're like, yeah. It's, it's gone, man. It's not going so good anymore. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? We're getting married. It's going great. This, she cooks uh, she, uh, like no black woman I've ever uh, seen cook before. Uh, referring to an earlier caller. Don't get pissed off. She's the greatest. She loves the animals. And Pia goes, no, it's, it's not working for me. We we, we got to cut it off. And you're like, but but everything's great. I thought it was great. No, but it's, the it's, penis it's usually has, more protesting than that, too. It's no. You know, oh, the be, penis? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no I mean Tom the defensiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, do your do uh, do your version of the penis, please. No, no. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna hide in your ass. <laughs> All right, and the penis has the final call, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, one more penis, one more penis cry before we go into commercial. <laughs> this is Tom doing the penis. No. That, again, is uh, the sound of Mr. Penis. Well, you keeping that, Engineer Mike? You keeping that on a uh, cart? Because we cool. will, we'll play that, and uh, ASCAP this will send Tom you uh, 35 cents every 10 years. 
That reverb really works cool, too. Uh, phone number here, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. Tom and Carrie from Slayer have joined us. They have a CD coming out soon. It is Undisputed Attitude. It's actually coming out tomorrow. Yep. And it'll about be, an hour and a half in some places. Be everywhere. And... Uh, uh, are they going to do some of those uh, record store things where they yeah. do it right at midnight and people line up and all that? You know, now that I mentioned that, I think they're not because it's a holiday weekend and they put out these flyers. It says, what does it say? Oh, you weren't even there when we saw it. It says, relax, come get it tomorrow. Oh, okay. Rest up after the holiday weekend. It'll be there the next day. <laughs> well, that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's kind of nice that they have to do something like that. Yeah. So that... I think they're having early morning ones like 6 or 7 or 8 or something. Okay, so uh, get in line. Get your uh, thermos full of uh, gin and get out there and uh, go buy yourself the new Slayer CD. This is a Slayer question. Oh, it is? Okay. Uh, Vamp? Yeah? 21, you have a Slayer question? Um. Yeah. Um. Okay, I... Just we just recently broke up, me and my fiance, and the uh, kind of a new twist to it is that we're both vampires. And a while ago, when we were first engaged, we both took a blood pact where we promised we were never gonna leave, and now he's gone and dating somebody else. And I'm wondering, you know, what should I do to get him back? I, you you, know, he left you. Well, yeah, it was. Last. What does that mean in the vampire culture that somebody breaks a blood pact? Um, and and please well, define for me what the vampire culture is. Maybe you guys can help couldn't, me. Couldn't you put some garlic around a schlong or something? <laughs> um, nah, the garlic doesn't work. That's just a Hollywood thing. Oh, okay. Well, it's um, well, if you drink the blood of another, from what I've been told, you are married. And is so that, is that is that what you guys do? Yeah. Mm. And everybody on my side hated him, mm. and nobody liked him, and I didn't care because he was mine. And what makes every- you, what makes you so desperate to to have somebody like that? What, what what's that all about? Well, I mean, you I, literally have to consume him. It's so important to you. I just made a pact with him. That yeah, I'm, but why is that so important? Do you have to? He's the, is he the only guy you've ever had a relationship with? The second. What happened with the first one? The first one dumped me after two years, and his girlfriend is now going to have a baby with him. So. Did Did you drink some of his blood? Um. Well, I a little, but he never drank mine. So. All right. Well, there, was, that's the problem. That, he, he was a. Jeez. Oh, that doesn't count. He was a vampire, also. Uh, that I don't know about. <laughs> I think he was, but I'm not. Oh, wait, wait. How do you get to be a vampire? You can be born into it. Oh, you can, but let's just let's just say like I'm I'm intrigued. I'd like to become a vampire. How do I get into this? Um, you can find somebody who is. Uh huh. Of the opposite sex. Tom Carey, any you guys uh, sprouting wings later? Are you okay? No, <laughs> no vampire. I, I just got off my wings. They were made of steel. It was an airplane, actually. <laughs> He's a modern day vampire, man. <laughs> yeah. Jet setting vampire. Yeah. Well, thing is, is that. When you take a blood pack like that, it's deeper than if you were to have sex with somebody. And yeah, but well, it wasn't too deep for him, right? <laughs> and, and Vamp, you know, left, what man. is it about you that you have to be in these intense, chaotic relationships? What is that? I don't know. I, what ha- what happened. what was your family upbringing like? What was I when I was brought up? No, how was the family situation when you were brought up? Typical fifties type family. Really, nothing ever happened in that system. Um, that's pretty much not existed in this world. What do you mean? The typical fifty family. Right. And so, what what happened in your family? Um, nothing pretty typical, I guess. I'm just a weird one out of the group. Like what? What is typical? Um, original parents. What happened to you that wasn't so typical? I just realized that I was different from everybody else. Hmm. I'm. I seem to have a unique gift that most people don't have. Well, what, well how does it manifest itself? I mean, what what are the perks of being a vampire? Mm, some people can be telepathic. Mm-hmm. You have that? A little. All right. What else? You can be psychic. Uh-huh. You, you have that? Yeah. Uh-huh. So you knew he was leaving? 
Pretty much, yeah, but I... Right. But you couldn't control them with your telepathy, right? I'm not that strong yet. Oh, okay. You I, build up. I just learned about it last year. Uh-huh. Hey, let me guess where you work. I'm going to guess. A video store. Do I bet them? Do you work at a video store? No. No? Where do you work? A pizza place. Oh, okay. Great. Absolutely. Just who you need handling the pepperoni. <laughs> She's got the blood uh, of, of another man <laughs> all over her hands, and she's uh, she's throwing dough. What do you do for this pizza place? I cook. Oh, oh. oh fantastic. <laughs> she, all right. She makes the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever put any weird vampire stuff in there? No. Someone gives you a little toot on the phone, you don't give them a little uh, shot of hemoglobin? No, no but I don't. <laughs> you want to? Sometimes that's that's you listen you're you can infect other people with that Don't all right let ridiculous. me just make a quick plea to the uh, management of the pizza place if you're listening <laughs> please move her to the register <laughs> uh, all right listen uh vampira mm -hmm. are you do you take any medications vamp no have you been medications in the past if you count the pill what medication no the pill yeah uh, that's the only pill medication you've ever been on yeah all right all right listen there's obviously some some difficulty in your life here that has caused you to go to to the dark side, and obviously the whole vampire thing is not uh, it's not panning out the way you thought it would in the early years. It sounded like a good idea, I'm, I'm guessing in high school, but it's turned out to be kind of eh, the guys left you, you suck some blood, now you're making pizza, <laughs> right? Things aren't going the way they could go. So I'm saying drop this whole vampire thing, and I don't know, maybe pick up the werewolf thing or. <laughs> Drew, do you, is, do you have something else you could pick up? Too much to handle on a couple minutes on the radio. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, you ever go out with any vampires? <laughs> no. Carrie? Uh, I guess not. I, I went out with a uh, blood sucker once, but uh, actually she was just a lawyer. Where's the hi hat <laughs> over there? My, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Engineer Mike with his thumb and his nose back there. Len <laughs> <laughs> he just told me it wasn't worth it. Lenore, 27. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hey. Okay, here's my thing. I'm new to Los Angeles, and I want to know um, where can I meet guys that are kind of like Drew? <laughs> kind of, you know, intelligent, you know, well-rounded. This really, this really violates all of Adam's sensibilities. Yeah. Where's geek country around here is what she's asking. Yeah, maybe a little on the conservative side, that kind of thing. Does uh, does uh, Cal Poly Pomona have a mall she could go hang out in or something? No, but seriously, like, or just people and, you know, guys in general that are... All right, you're broadening it to just but, things with penises. Very desperate. I, mean, I want to be dominated. You know, that where you can, well, just give me your point of view. Do you have friends here? Yeah. Network with your friends. <laughs> no, really. I mean, that's 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 the bottom line. You're not going to be happy going out to bars and. Uh, right. That's uh, what I've been doing. Yeah, and that, that's going to be a very unpleasant experience, you probably. And if you have friends who know you and know what you're interested in and kind of people you like, ask them to help you meet people and sort of network through that. Very cool. Lenore, if you really want to meet a doctor, yeah, go out to a golf course. <laughs> And That's... you and you won't find any. Oh come on! No, no Adam. No. Oh, Adam, true. Adam. I know the no. life of the doctor. No, no. the no. pager. No, sure. No. Oh yes, hitting no. the links. No, well, not you, but no. <laughs> right. no. no, no, no. You know what I like about Lenore? She went from I want to find a good-looking, handsome doctor to uh, just you as long as he's got a nut sack and he walks, <laughs> stands up straight. That's fine. <laughs> I like that kind of flexibility in a listener. All right, Drew, you got a call there? I like when he points. Tiffany, 18, you're on Love Line. Hi, how are you guys? Yeah. Okay. Um, you like Slayer? Sure. Good. <laughs> She's so full of crap, okay. but go ahead. Um, I got a question. I've been friends with this guy for about almost five years now, and um, <clears throat> we haven't been really close. But um, he knows a lot of intimate stuff about me, and I don't know so much about him. But lately, I've been hearing from his other friends that uh, he's always had a huge crush on me. And this has happened before with other guy friends that I've had. And um, I'm just trying to figure out what to do about it lately. He's been um, getting kind of close, sort of intimate-like, or 
seems like he wants to. Like, um, one time I was upset and he hugged me and he started nibbling on my ear and it really bothered me. I you mean like your, one of your grandparents had died and he, he was consoling no, you and then started upset. eating you? <laughs> no, not even close. No, I was upset. Um, it was another friendship situation. Okay, but you didn't like him nibbling at your ear. No, so I kind of pushed him away, and I told him I, I couldn't have that right now. I, it, it really bothered me. Good, that's good. But now he, you he, want him back. No, I never liked him that way. She wants to know how to manage this relationship now that he, exactly. it's been clearer oh, to okay. her. Oh, okay. You know, what do you think? Can, can they be friends? Ugh, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, that, I mean, that we've all thing is Tom. Like, you've you've have, have you ever had anything happen like this? Yeah, everybody gets that. Can't we just be friends? Right now, have you, have you... <laughs> it happened before in the past with other two people that this has happened with. Um, our friendship pretty much diminished for a matter of months, and we had to pretty much start over. All right, but here's the basis of your friendship, and let me explain this phenomenon. A lot of ladies out there say, I got a guy, we've been friends since, you know, five years since uh, the seventh grade, and this guy's been the greatest. Man, he does everything for me. And I know he likes me, and I don't like him that way. And I'm scared to say anything because I don't want to ruin the friendship. But let me tell you what the friendship is based on. The friendship is based on his penis. It's basically what it is. The reason why this guy is such a prince is because he has a heart on for you, Tiffany. That's why he's the greatest guy in the world. Believe me, you see the attitudinal change the second you put on 40 pounds. We'll see what a great guy he is. Come on, don't leave me out here alone. True? Tom? Well, Carrie? <laughs> Your friendship is not is based on um, um, sperm production. It's not based on, uh, you know, general interest. It's, it's not that you guys have uh, things that you both enjoy and that he loves your personality so much. He's been trying to get in your pants, and he's on, he's on, the, uh, he's on the installment plan. It's like a, yes, it's like a T-bill or a P-bill, whatever you want to call it. But You know what I'm saying? All right, so here's what you do, Tiffany. Okay. All right, you ready? Okay. And this is going to be one of those that will solve itself deals. You tell him. Listen, I don't feel that way about you. I like you as a friend. And, it, and it's not going to change. And it's not going to change. We're never going to have a physical relationship. Then, if he sticks around, you know it's A, because he really does cherish your friendship, or B, he's just so stupid and so hard on, has such a hard on for you that he can't even hear anymore. You understand, Tiffany? And if he goes the other way, then he was only around you because he liked you in, in a pair of shorts in the first place. Does that make any sense? I think that, sort of. that that's actually reasonable. It, it is yeah, reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, really? I even kept up with that. Yeah, yeah. you were the, there. The, yeah. the, the, the clear message that we're, that, <laughs> that you need to hear from Adam is that you must make it very clear to him that you're not anticipating. You will never have that kind of a relationship with him. Right, that's, unless you get drunk. <laughs> We're back here on Love Line. Uh, Engineer Mike, are we coming in? Well, Engineer Mike's coming in. Uh, let me give the phone number out. 1-800-LOVE-191. 1-800-568-3191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. It is Tom Araya and Carrie King. Oh, that was me? <laughs> Both from Slayer. You're freaking him out. Up uh, until this point, we heard nothing. You know what? That, that, that pat on your back was for, Adam. Yeah, that, <laughs> for screwing us up. Yeah, but you know, don't touch well, that. Don't was, touch oh, that I, thing. Oh, okay. All right. Well, all right. I thought he moved the switch. All right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it looked worse than it sounded, fellas. Uh, Undisputed attitude. Slayer's latest CD out tomorrow. So uh, that'll be everywhere. So go find that. And uh, until then. We're going to get back to the phone. And you guys you guys are catching your second wind now, right, Kerry? I think I'm there. <laughs> you just Did you just get off the plane tonight? Yeah. And was it... Uh, he got in like 7. He got in earlier today. I now, got, it, it was not nonstop, was it? No, I stopped in Washington and said hi to the Clintons. And uh, <laughs> they told me to go to hell, so I left. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see you playing the... Uh, well, you guys are going to play the inaugural ball. If, uh, if he wins this year, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Michelle, 20, you're on Love Line with Slayer. Oh, my God, Slayer. I've loved you guys since Rain and Blood. Since Rain and Blood. Yeah. Um, my problem is 
that. I just moved back in with my parents. And, and they don't dig us. No. <laughs> Hey, hey, Michelle. Yes. We got to put you on hold and step away for just ten seconds. Do it. Huh? That's, that is all right. Yeah. Hey, what you say again? We're what doing professional it? radio here. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Fax number three one zero eight five four four five 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 five. You're worried Dr. about Carole. us. I'm <laughs> Carol. Yeah. Slayer's doing fine. It's a uh, love line that's getting screwed tonight. Uh, undisputed attitude. We have Tom Araya. Yes. Now, is that a, uh, and sorry, Carrie King, and is that a Spanish name? Yeah, it's a Chilean name. Oh, Chilean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that, is that, now that, I'm no. from Chile. I'm, uh, I was originally born in South America, Chile. And when, uh, when did you come over here? 66. Uh huh. 67. Uh, Can I see some paperwork, please? <laughs> <laughs> I am now a citizen of the States. You are? Yeah. She's an American. Did I'm, you, a, I'm an American. Did you come over uh, illegally? Yeah. I, no, I came over here. <laughs> I came over here legally. <laughs> you, you weren't like stuffed in the back of a van or anything? No, no, no. No, no, uh, no. no sheriff's guys nah, beat, beat up on you? No, no, no. Okay. So you're here. Everything's legal. <laughs> everything's legal. <laughs> I'd love to see the work visa. Uh, what do you do? I just scream like a madman and force a bunch of teenagers <laughs> to bash each other in the head. Michelle. <laughs> Make a ton of money and have a good time. Tom, scream my name. Oh, you want Tom to scream yeah. scream your name? Yeah. All right, hold on. Let let everyone sit back. I'm worried <laughs> about the saliva. <laughs> <laughs> it's what is it? It's Michelle. Michelle. How loud do you want it? I want as loud as you can get it. You you ready in that other room over there? Put that needle back some. Well, hold on. Let's put some duct tape on the glass. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle, are you done wasting Tom's time? Yeah, He's I'm very sorry. important, man. I'm sorry. Okay, my problem being, um, I've heard my parents have sex every night. Uh huh. What are their names? Maybe Tom could yell, yell, <laughs> yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard them having sex. Yeah. Uh huh. Since I was three, four Ugh. years old, that's got to warp the mind. Um. We're talking five times a week. It starts at 2 o'clock, okay, and it goes till about 6 o'clock. I found out my dad does cocaine. I don't know if that makes him, I don't know, get it on longer. Uh, that would explain the four hours. Right. Because I go from, like, 2 o'clock to, like, 2.04, <laughs> and then, then you'd hear the TV. <laughs> so um, I'm just wondering how does that... How does that, I mean, does anyone know how that directly could affect me? Well, you know, I, I suspect more and, than... And they deny it, too. Yeah, right. They deny it. They say they don't do it. It's all in my head. That's I'm great. It's good that you were able to confront them. But but the fact, it's, it's more about what it says about your family system than how much that is going to traumatize you. Right. I mean, definitely it is a inappropriate behavior it sort of violates all the usual boundaries in a family system and it's in it's inconsiderate for you but it really is, you know you've already said he's a cocaine addict and it just it just suggests that there's an unhealthy situation there. well what do you want and, him to and do that's more what's going to affect you but drew come on they're they were young right at the time they well, started I do this i just moved back in and i know now i'm hearing it on my own accord because i moved back in and they're doing me a favor uh huh. If I let me move back in. All right, so but let, they're let me, still doing it, and they're still denying it. Let me just do some quick math. Okay. Your mom has been on her back. Right. Uh, four hours a night, five nights a week. Was that twenty hours? Yeah. Jeez, that's like a that's a big work yeah. week for me. <laughs> twenty hours a week. Uh, how many times? Fifty-two weeks in the year. What's the twenty times? Uh, two times uh, fifty-two. There, Doctor well, Drew. One thousand forty. One thousand forty. All right, so that's a year. Now, this is since you were three? Yeah. All right, so I'm she's 17. got about 20,000 hours logged with your father's log <laughs> on top of her. It, it, am I right? Uh, yeah. Does, can she get around okay, or she use one of those Lark, those little motorized things? Oh, no, she's okay. Really? Yeah. I had no idea a woman could... Well, your, your dad must not be real proud. Michelle, it just, again, it, it, it sounds like it bothers you, and it, it, I think it's more the issue of what's going on in your family generally than this specific issue. How's your own sex life? Um, well... It must be wonderful if she gives us that kind of a sigh. 
Yeah. And, and that's, again... Well, it, well, let's hear about it. What's going on? Well, when I have sex, I'm afraid to show myself. Show I mean, yourself? Like, as my face, I can't... It's like I'm... I mean, I get into it, like, if I'm drunk or whatever, I get into it. Right. So you're inhibited. Right. She right, can't, she can't be intimate. I my face, and I think I'm All right, so you, doing you, something wrong. You can't Your be Your parents' intimate. inhibitions inhibited you. Her dis, or, their or disinhibitions. Their, their disinhibitions sort of inhibited you, which well, is kind of weird. Just, again, like whatever craziness was going on at home affected her ability to have healthy relationships. All right, what she should she do? Uh, ten seconds, Drew. Go ahead, fix get it. Get help if she, if she feels compelled. I mean, if she, if she really bothered by this, she should get some professional help. Yeah, and, and get out of the house. Boy, that must have been weird, her confronting her folks. You guys ever walk in on your folks getting on? <laughs> Not no. at all. No. Thank God my parents got divorced. I, I think they stopped after me. <laughs> I said, it's like, we may have another like Carrie. <laughs> Get the IUD out. <laughs> Tom, ever walk out? Because I know the no. Ch Chileans, very hot-blooded breed, those Chileans, going at it like uh, chihuahuas all day long. Nothing? Never walked in? No, never. Oh, good. There, there's seven in the family, too. So oh, really? They're pretty busy. Yeah, they're prolific. <laughs> prolific old family. Vincent, 16, you're on Love Line with Slayer. What's up? What's hey. Up? Slayer, I saw you guys last year in Tucson. TCC is bad. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> well, um, let's see. My concern is that I've been smoking cigarettes since I was about 11. Mm -hmm. I've been smoking marijuana since consistently since I was about 12, and I was wondering how long before cancer cells begin to form in my lungs and whatnot. You probably will make graduation, don't you think, Drew? Yeah, you it, think so? There's no, there's no way to tell you exactly how long oh, it's going really? to be. You're just certainly at risk for it. There's sort of a threshold of 50 pack years, we call it, the number of packs per day times the number of years smoked that really, really increases uh, the, the risk after you exceed that threshold, but you can get it at any point. You are at risk by virtue of your tobacco use. Yeah. The marijuana use just uh, causes chronic bronchitis. We don't know that it causes lung cancer. Oh, really? Well, that informs me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you plan on cutting down or quitting or anything? Oh, I plan on quitting smoking cigarettes real soon. I don't know about weed. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. We, we Sounds like it's done you pretty pretty well so far, Vincent. <laughs> we, you know, we, if it ain't broke. Weed yeah. needs treatment. Weed needs treatment. Or you'll switch to something else. Um, I doubt that. All right. Vincent? I guarantee it. Your grade's good? Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. I'm a sophomore. I'm going on to junior next year. Ooh. Go, going, going on to junior, man. You hear that? <laughs> well, you know, they do let once uh, some slip by the cracks every once in a while. <laughs> Actually, I was one of those <laughs> in high school. All right. Well, Vincent's uh, carved out quite a life for himself. Wait a we got something here. Oh, oh we used to have those. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, a great cake there. Drew, why don't you take over here while I blow on the brass? We got a birthday cake for Adam. <laughs> but, but you guys need to describe it. Yeah, it's very yeah. huge. <laughs> <laughs> and as a matter of fact, that's what I wish for. <laughs> well, may really? you wear them well. <laughs> oh, it is my birthday today. And producer Ann not only buffed out the studio, but uh, made, well, no, obviously professional made these. Am I right? <laughs> But you, they didn't even use you for the mold, Dan. <laughs> to the mayor of Boobville. <laughs> now, you guys may not know about Boobville over there at Slayer, but we already got Rancid signed up as a house band. Of course, they can't play seven nights a week. We're going to need a headline band. We're going to need a Friday and Saturday band. And maybe you guys, Boobville. meaning Slayer, could come yeah. in and play Boobville once in a while. I think me and Jeff should be mayors. <laughs> Absolutely. Your, your boob co mayor. Yeah. yeah? Really? Yeah. Give me a little high five. Actually, yeah. <laughs> me and Tom's birthday is like three days apart, and we usually get these every year. Yeah. Oh, we really? We fight one. We get yeah, it. It's we pretty get cool. It. I'm yeah. hoping next year I get the crotch cake. But... <laughs> we had one of those, yeah, too. One of those too. <laughs> <laughs> I can see myself coming home. I was like, hey, Adam, so I... how many years is this? Then? Why is there frosting on your schlong? Well, it's a long story. <laughs> 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 I am 32. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you, Ann. This is, this is what you, do you, do you want to give a plug? This is amazing. Who made this? You paid you paid for it. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. God bless <laughs> producer Ann. Golf clap. All right, Ann, can we should we start golf clap? <laughs> you know, it goes against everything I stand for to carve into these breasts. <laughs> what do you want to do? Golf 
Get a photo. Perhaps we could like uh, Kodak moment. <laughs> could we augment them with some uh, some Jello or something? <laughs> like, Drew, show us how the augmentation process works uh, on the boob cake, please. No. All right, well, Slayer, you guys want some cake? <laughs> oh, I never have trouble turning down cake. All right, you guys, you guys dibby up the uh, right one, and I'll keep the left one, and Drew uh, can watch and salivate. Thank you, producer Ann. You're wonderful. Oh, boy, treated like a king in my own castle here. Drew, you got a call picked down? Four. Four. All right. Don, 17, you're on Love Line with Slayer. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good. Doing all right? Um, I have a little problem. Um, my best friend, since I was really young, is kind of befriending me. I was engaged to this guy for two years, and I was really happy, and I'm still in love with him. I, I think I'll always be. But anyway, she was going out with my boyfriend's brother. And I found out that all along that they were screwing around together. And so, in other words, um, they're doing cocaine together. Mm. They're on drugs. Yeah. And it's a good thing you got out of this. I didn't get out of it. He dumped me. I think if he... But it's a good thing that happened. I'm, I'm sorry it's what he is, but that is what he is, and it's a good thing you're out. That's what that's what my school counselor tells me, too, and it still hurts. Really. Of course it does. Of course it does. I don't know what to do about it. And I mean, I thought I was going to marry this guy. Yeah, but, but he is not... It's It's a fantasy... That you were going to marry. Exactly. And that's what I told him. It's not who he is. You would not have enjoyed the marriage to this guy. He did not used to be like this. Um, um, Matt, oh, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, Don, 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 please don't deny it is what he is. Oh, I know that's what he is now. Okay. It's what he is. How old is he now? Right, wait, now? I want to hear her say that. He, oh, okay. he, you know, it's what he is. You want Tom to scream it? No. <laughs> but, I mean, the fact is that imagine the pain you're experiencing now. And spread that over 20 or 30 years. Okay? That's what you could have been looking forward to. That's what my counselor told me. Well, what would you do if you married him? Right. And he was screwing around with your best friend, which was his brother's girlfriend. And, and you're, having, you're having trouble letting go now. Imagine if you were in a committed... Yeah, Don, you know. believe me, this is a blessing. I know. They're, uh, they're, I mean, you know, it's like, uh, it's like getting your tooth pulled or something when you're 15. <laughs> a lot of pain, little blood, a few tears, but... Ultimately, it's a good thing. It needed to be. It needed to be done. Exactly. All right. I'm really worried about the both of them though, because they're doing cocaine together. Well, uh, understandably, you could still worry about your best friend in the view of your history together, a lifelong friendship. Exactly. But uh, she's in trouble, and she may not be somebody you can sustain a relationship with. All right. I don't know if I should just, you know, tell somebody or just leave it alone. I'm um, scared for her. I still yeah. love her, but if it was anything yeah, else, you know what? Leave it, know. leave it alone for now. And uh, if you have an opportunity to help out, don't let him down. I mean, we should point him in the right direction if you have that opportunity. But don't get involved. Tom, Carrie, you guys uh, ever ever have any loves from high school that you plan on marrying? <laughs> That's a tough one. I, I mean, I probably did at the time. Yeah, I mean, you know, looking back, it's like, well, that didn't work. So, Carrie had a uh, girlfriend in high school? Oh, yeah. My first one was like five years. Really? All the uh, way through? No, from, from like when I graduated to like I was like uh, 22, 23 or something. And how did it end? <laughs> we just figured out that we weren't right. <laughs> 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 Went our separate ways, and now she's still my friend. It's pretty cool. Oh, really? Yeah. God damn, you're normal. I know. <laughs> like that, you should see you should see Carrie, though. You really, he looks like a long, short... He, he looks like somewhere... There's this wrestler called Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, <laughs> let's let's talk about 300 pounds more, maybe. Okay, no, you're not you're you're not you're not uh, as uh, as husky as Bam Bam, but you could at least be like Bam Bam Bam, <laughs> Bam with an M. But I mean, you look like the kind of guy who might have like a, a you know body in the trunk of your car or something, and here you are having normal, healthy relationships. <laughs> So I'm going to focus on Tom. Tom, <laughs> you any crazy Chilean broads lately? <laughs> no, no, no. Do you get back to Chile? Uh, yeah, I've been back there. Nice country there? Yeah, it's very How nice. are the women? Nice. Yeah. Be beautiful women. There's uh -huh. beautiful women everywhere. Uh huh. They understand the rock star concept over there, don't they? Uh, kind of, yeah. Good. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> Trying to get women to understand the radio star concept, but so far, so far, no well, you're takers. On your way, you got that cake. <laughs> Gomer, <laughs> Gomer, yeah, pile twenty one, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Drew. How are you? I'm all right, Gomer. Tom and Carrie, you guys rule. Thanks, dude. Okay, check it out. I got a question. Uh, I know the Undisputed album, right? It's a bunch of covers, right? Right. Now, last song, Gemini. Is that one of your own? Yes, yes sir. It is. 
Is it? Yep. Awesome. That's and and the one. fourth and fifth one. Are, am I right? Was this memory uh, serves? Yeah. Those um, are Jeff's, yeah. Minor stuck covers, right? You guys got a bunch of those, right? A few of them. Yeah. Few of them. Now, who's guilty of being white? Well, Tom's not. <laughs> 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 but he's saying it. Who, who does it? Who does that originally? Minor Threat. Minor right Threat. On. Very cool. I love your album. Hope to see you guys again. Gomer, Thanks, do, you, do you have it already? Um, Yes, actually, I do. Hope no one gets pissed off. Oh. Oh. What? what? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. And I'm getting to that. Cool. It goes Voice on of God has told us. <laughs> goes on sale. Right. Gomer, what'd you do? Blow some record exec? No, actually, I know some do that, but it helps you guys out. Uh, uh, the Inquisition yeah. starts. <laughs> 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 All right, so you blow him? <laughs> oh man, we're having a good time tonight with Slayer. Nikki, thirteen, you're on Love Line. Um, hi. Um, I just to say that you guys are so cool, and happy birthday, Adam. Thank you. Um, and you and Dr. Drew have the most sexiest voices I've ever heard. Really? Uh-huh. You, should, you should see how <laughs> see how fat and hairy we are in real life. Oh, you're probably beautiful. Um, but my question is directed towards Dr. Drew or whoever can. Um, I was wearing a swimsuit and um, some of my pubic hair was showing, and so when I was like, I decided to shave some of it more, so it wouldn't show. And uh, right, you backtrack. You had some pubic hair showing where? When when I was wearing a swimsuit. Okay. And I decided to shave a little. Well, then I took a shower and um, I shaved a lot of it, and then um, I noticed afterward that it was starting to grow, and it really irritated me. It was like it was red. And like with spots where the hair had been shaved off, and um, it was it was like itchy, and it hurt when I touched my private part. Mm-hmm. And is it infected? I mean, is it really? Is it getting hot to touch? I mean, is there actually like swelling and, and redness I, there? I have no idea because this is the first time I. Oh, I was just gonna ask you: Is that the first time you've ever shaven? Well, before when I first started getting BB care, I didn't like it, so I shaved my whole private part. I totally went crazy. I didn't want hair down there, and it got irritated. And so it went away, and I just let my hair grow. But now I'm wearing my swimsuit, and I'm, like, going to parties, and I don't want, like, my pubic hair to show. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing. Sounds like razor rash to me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys, Carrie, ever shave your private parts? No, but there's this thing called your face. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah. Same thing happens. I got the same thing, yeah. <laughs> Adam has this thing called his ass <laughs> that he shaved. Please. Not even on my birthday. We let up on the ass shaving day. But I mean, did you have any problem like this? All right, let me just clarify this one more time. I did not shave my ass like a barber shaves a guy's chin. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No. I did not get a. I, there was no after. There was no after shave. There was no shaving cream. There was no belt. There was no straight edge. There was no safety razor. There was nothing. I sheared my ass like a farmer shears a sheep. I see. You understand? Adam well, that beautiful, so however he shaves his ass is beautiful. Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> You're a very forgiving soul. You know, schmoozing the host. I, I accept you and your uh, earth bush, and you accept me and my uh, my shaven butt, and together we could we could start some sort of utopia where people didn't care. And I'll call it Boobville. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Jeff are the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, Nikki, this is a. Uh... Normal, okay. And I, I would think, Anne, I'm looking for you to, to help us yeah. out here. Can, is, there, is there some trick well, to this? Well, she's 13. How much hair does she have? Well, look, Anne, it's enough. Just give her some, some pointers. Is she's it gonna, enough? She's going to have more now. Yeah. I mean, that's why they have the bikini wax, right? Right. Well, that's, yeah, that's waxing. And that's would that be... differently. And you got to remember to go the same way that it grows out, not against the... Which it right. sounds like she really went down. Yeah, to yeah. Don't so, go against the grain. She's getting ingrown hair. Yeah, and that's right. why I got irritated. Right. I think. Yeah, and you can do what I do, and not on my ass, thank you, but <laughs> on my chin, is you use a single edge razor. You know, for sensitive skin, not a double edge. Because uh. if you shave it real close, you'll get the hair shaved down below the skin line, uh. and then it'll grow back. It'll be ingrown. That's what's wrong with my skull. That's right. No, your skull's beautiful. Hell, it looks like you buffed that thing before you came in. <laughs> no, I've been on a greasy airplane all day. <laughs> it's, well, it looks it's, good. It's, it's a greasy buildup after a long day. <laughs> I'm going to rub it for luck later in the show. So, okay? No, you got Boomville cake over there. Oh, that's true. You're all excited right. over here. All right, now, uh, well, we got a break. we got to go for plates. Yeah. And we'll be back. Well, 
Well, did I mention that later this week we will have Thomas Calabro? He is Dr. Mancini from Melrose Place, also Imperial Dragon. Wait a minute. Did I screw up the name of that band? Yeah, Imperial Drag. I'm sorry. Right. right. Yes. You keep Imperial calling Drag. Dragon. Yeah, I don't know why. Here, Imperial. Yeah. That makes me think of uh, dra- I don't know, Chinese, Chinese yeah. and firecrackers yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Imperial. You guys were a player. Well, I was calling you the other night. <laughs> you guys sing that song. Baby, come back. Any kind of fool could see. <laughs> No, I never called Slayer player. That is Tom, Araya, and Carrie King, both from Slayer. And our uh, sliced up boob should be in here any moment. So, uh, <laughs> guys, uh, feel free to partake. And uh, back to the phones we go. Tony, 19, you're on Love Line with Slayer. How are you guys doing? Good. Right. That's good. Uh, let's see, I've been going out with my girlfriend for about uh, a year and a half now. She's two years younger than me, 17. Uh, we were about six months into the relationship before we decided to have sex, and it was really painful for her the first time. So that, was that her first sexual experience? <laughs> yeah, I was the first guy with a French kisser. Mm-hmm. How old is she? 17. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we waited another month or so, and we did it a couple more times, and it was still really painful for her. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering if there's like any method. It's been like five or six months now. And uh, I was wondering if there's any method I can use, or you know, has she had a has she had a pelvic exam? Uh, no, but she she did have one problem I know of. She had uh, when she was real young, she had an operation on one of her ovaries because mm-hmm. there was blockage blockage of eggs. Yeah, that's not likely to really cause any problems at, like of this type. Uh-huh. But she needs to have a pelvic exam to make sure there's no other anatomic problem. Okay. Uh huh. If she's sexually active, she should be seeing a doctor. I mean, people who engage in early sexual activity tend to have more gynecologic problems. And but this isn't early by uh, today's standards. But it's it's considered you know early. And, and the well, let's get to the crux of the, of the yeah yeah. The other thing here. is that, Tony, how you swing it? Uh, yeah. Well, what's the average? Five to seven. <laughs> yeah. Is that the American average? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm right in the middle. Okay. And the other thing is that the most common reason for this kind of pain... She's small. She's a really petite girl. And, and Tony, the most common reason for this kind of discomfort is actually anxiety. Uh-huh. That she, she may not be ready for this yet emotionally, and it may be overwhelming her, and, and the muscles tighten up, and it causes pain. Dry up like the Serengeti. Am I right, Drew? It's not so much <laughs> dry versus wet. It's it's about the muscle spasm. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's really no, there's what? Really no method. I don't know. I never thought about that. You mean you get I mean, tense and you have these spasms? It's called vaginismus. Really? Yeah. I yeah. think I got that. <laughs> Tony. Like Punchline. <laughs> vaginismus. Is that, is that that new vitamin drink? That's the problem. Rabbi goes into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Orders a uh, vaginismus. <laughs> Tony. Yeah. Can you feel the vaginites on you? No, man. No, I can't feel anything. Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, but but you should be using, like, the Astroglide and that kind of stuff, right? Lubrication, yeah, right, Drew? K- I'm using the KY and, jelly. Yeah. And, okay. And make sure, be emotionally supportive, make sure this is something she wants to be doing. Yeah, yeah, we've discussed it, yeah. you know, in, in depth. And she said, like, the only thing that's keeping her back is the pain. Mm. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not going, like, fast and hard. I'm, I'm just, like, I'm taking it real nice and slow and all that well, stuff. But, okay. I mean, I'm wondering if it's because of her size. She's, she's really... All pain. right, listen... Tony. Yeah. Let me explain something. We do not have her vagina here in the studio. <laughs> we wish we did, but we don't. There's only so much we can do over the radio. Am I right, Drew? Correct. All right, Tony. Yeah. It sounds like you're uh, you're 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 doing right. So just uh, have her checked out. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you guys get any boob cake, Tom? I have my mouth full of boob as we speak. Uh, very good. <laughs> Tom, do you, you you don't partake? Well, you married? It, What's comes, going on? When it, when it comes in. <laughs> oh, okay. You didn't get, oh, I see. Oh, Drew didn't get any either. No, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. All right. So Drew passed his this way. Slow up, Chuck. Kevin, 20. You want some of my boob? No. <laughs> you want some of mine? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. There's hair on this nipple. <laughs> Kevin, 20, you're on Love Line with Slayer. Hey there, Adam. Hey. I spent over nine years in Hawaii, and I just want to set the record straight that mahalo only means thank you. You are absolutely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Hawaii once, and I was drunk, but I can tell you what what mahalo means. Okay, what does it mean? It means everything. 
It means everything aloha doesn't mean. Oh, okay. That's that's the way they figured it out. Well, I can tell you how you say a-hole in Hawaiian. Go ahead. It's okole puka. <laughs> it's a really off-the-wall weird that makes sense. word, isn't it? Yeah, well, you kind of have like a colon and poopo kind of mixed in. I also want to wish you happy birthday, Adam. Thank you, but Kevin. I have a question for Slayer. Thank God. <laughs> eh, bite me. Uh, whatever happened to uh, Dave Lombardo? I remember when you went on an interview on the Headbangers Ball when it was still around that you said he died. <laughs> we still say that sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay. But what really happened? I've, I've been dying to know this one. <laughs> well, actually, we just found out in Europe that he's driving his family around the country behind his band in a rent-a-car. You want to know what happened between us and Dave? Yes. It was personal. Oh. He <laughs> wouldn't give you none? <laughs> All right, Kevin, we've had just about enough of your disrespect, you know. First he starts bagging on me, then he goes after the band. Drew's the only one, the only sacred cow that has not been, been attacked so far. Drew, you want some nipple? No, I'm all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, 22, uh, we're on Love Line with Slay, and we're just sitting here eating our fabulous boob cake. Okay, I hope you're enjoying it. Certainly are. <laughs> all right, my question is, I've been going out with my fiancé for four years, and it doesn't seem like he ever wants to have sex anymore. I get it, like, maybe once a month. Oh, and that I've sucks. Oh. And I've asked him, you know, this is a your, This is your fiancé? Huh? This is your fiancé? Yes. It ain't going to get better. <laughs> give, him, give him the ring back, Jody. He hasn't gotten me a ring yet. All right. Oh, he's a real winner, isn't he? <laughs> Does he go down on you, Jody? Um, Maybe once a month. Oh. I mean, it's like we, we live together. We've lived together for three years. And Who pays the rent? Is, you? Huh? Do you pay the rent? We both split it. Oh. All right. So, so he's getting a free ride. <laughs> <laughs> and Jody isn't. Jody. What? Is he there? Let me talk to him. No, he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk to him. We'll talk some say? sense in this one. You know, I have the power of ten men. I'm eating a boob right now. I've never felt more virile in my life. I recommend it, by the way. Stay away from the penis cake, but you eat a boob cake, and all of a sudden you feel like the most virile man alive. I am just pumping out the testosterone tonight. Jody. All right. Now, where is he? At his girlfriend's house? No, he's at friend's house. Mm -hmm. uh, at a friend's house. Once, once a month. And and how did the relationship start? How did it start? I mean, how often were you having Dude, sex? What's he doing at a friend's house in the middle of the night? Um, what's up with that? Well, I was over there, too, and I just decided it was boring. I left. What, what's, who's a friend? Blocked away. Who's the friend? Who's the friend? Yeah. It actually used to be a friend of mine. A girlfriend. Yeah. A guy friend. Yeah. All right. Drew, thanks for steering us down that dead yeah, end. Yeah, but street. well, but you know, that's another possibility here is that things aren't going so well in the relationship. All right, well, the thing Columbo, you done over there? I'm Columbo. done. I'm, sh I'm done. I'm gonna go outside. How often were you having sex in the first couple months of the relationship? Um, all the time. All right, and now once, once a, month. a month. Once a month. All right. See, what's this? that tell you? <laughs> it's dropping off. You get married, and believe me, drops off after you get married. Drew was uh, was getting it like a like a crazed monkey before he got married. Yeah. Now, believe me, he gets it once a month. He's, he comes in here with his shirt off, pounding his chest. <laughs> do, you any, do you have any suggestions? Now, my wife gets offended by all that stuff. So, oh, she uh, does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh what suggestions yeah because i mean i have like every time I, it happens too it's my initiation you know he never like starts it i have to uh-huh i have to like dress up and get all like ready and that's the only way it can like start him all right this this is a deal breaker you must find a new man i'm serious that's it is okay. there any does he give you an excuse is he on any medication no I mean, he does. He smokes marijuana every once in a while. He said he'd cut down and see if that helps. And he's cut down tremendously. And that's it not has it. not helped that's, at all. No, it's not. no, let me tell you, Bob Marley went like a rabbit. <laughs> all right? It's not that. This guy's he's run out of libido. I guess so. He's 23. What, what happened? Uh, there's a big difference between 23 and 17 for a lot of guys. He He's, uh, he's well, uh, tapped out his also, resources. It also could be this relationship. Oh, yeah. Could be you. Oh, great. Jody? Yeah? You look the same? Yes. You know what I'm saying. Put on any way? No. Okay. And I asked him. I said, am I, am I attractive to you? And he says, yes. All right. But he has to answer that. 
This, well, this okay, well, how, okay, I'm 5'8", I weigh like 135, I have blonde hair, green eyes. All right, there's nothing wrong with you, Jody. <laughs> you just realized I had to ask. All right, yeah. You're fine. He's run out of steam. Maybe how he feels about it, or maybe somebody else. Yeah. Jody. Yeah. I'm going you're going to have to really sit down and, 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 and figure this one out. And uh, give him back his invisible engagement ring, too, by the way. Okay. All right. She answered that like she was going to do that. <laughs> like I was talking about Wonder Woman's plane or something. Like she was going to take that invisible <laughs> ring off and here and, and throw it at him. And then he was going to, like, bobble it and go, oh, crap, it landed in the sink. <laughs> well, get down there and get it. <sighs> Once a month. Now, Carrie hasn't made a sound all night, but as soon as he heard once a month, all of a sudden he was outraged. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty offensive, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. the Carrie's like, uh huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better as the night goes on. I you are warming up. up. Oh, yeah, by four in the morning, you'll be hosting oh, yeah. the show. <laughs> you'll be doing the Grease Man show out of this studio in about five hours. Are we still going to be rocking then? Oh, yes. <laughs> We're pulling an all nighter. It's an Adam uh, Cake Party birthday bash featuring Slayer, and we'll be back. Slayer is in studio tonight. I am Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. It's my birthday. I'm sitting here eating boob cake with Slayer. Oh, if my carpet cleaning buddies could just see me now. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. 1-800-568-3191. that be the phone number. Here be the fax number. 310-854-4455. We're going to play another cut off of Undisputed Attitude, but not just yet we're going to dangle that like the uh, proverbial carrot in front of the horse we're going to get back to the phones now jim 21 <laughs> you're on love line with slayer hey adam and drew what's up hey hey tom and carrie what's morning up, man? hey it's got a question for you guys um i wondered when you're out on the road and you're uh doing different tours or different cities do you pay attention to the bands that open like i know um i've seen you a couple times up here in portland and uh, the bands that open are usually kind of like a local hardcore act or, you know, something local. I wondered if you, um, you know, if that kind of stuff interests you or if you paid attention to that kind of stuff or if you just kind of like in the back somewhere. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes you pay attention. Isn't it usually during hookers and crack hour, though? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got to understand, these guys are backstage. They're trash in the green room. <laughs> They're they're basically destroying Making the place. Yeah, they they're they're taking like their road manager and beating the crap out of them, <laughs> putting a drumstick up him and stuff. They don't have time to listen to the opening band. They're getting <laughs> they're getting into the, the mindset. They're getting psyched up for the gig. <laughs> cool. Why, Jimmy, in one of those bands? Uh, no, I was just kind of curious. I mean, um, because a lot of those bands that I've seen them with, um, like I started seeing them um, on the Rain of Blood, and um, a lot of those bands that that they came through with they're just really big now it's kind of like i kind of feel like i've grown up with some of these bands that were local and now they're and now they're well i don't know if they're really large big but they're known very well like in the pacific northwest uh-huh it's just kind of cool so uh, slayer's a bit of a good luck charm well i'm I'm not sure about that. Oh, let's just say. <laughs> it's like a comedian getting uh, getting a stint doing stand-up on uh, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, you know, back in those days. It's a, it's a launching pad. Opening for Slayer will we'll launch you. Didn't, uh, I think uh, Zeppelin got their start opening for you guys. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Tom, 16, you're on Love Line with Slayer. Um, yeah, hi. Hey. Hey. Um, I got a problem here. Um, a buddy of mine, right, we like to wrestle around, you know, we like to get into a kind of fight, you know, the what, bit, and uh, he knocked me down on my bed, and, like, he practically, like, spread his arms out and jumped on me, man, like, he straddled me, like, he was trying to cop a fill, and he kept laid on me for, like, like a minute, and I couldn't get him off me, and uh, ever since then, he's been, like, little remarks towards me, and I'm not sure if, like, he's kind of fruity or what. Well, it's, it's ah! not... <laughs> <laughs> You want to give the fruity scream, Tom? <laughs> yeah, no, I think Carrie did that one well. Uh, Tom, Drew did that to me during the last commercial. I don't think it meant anything, Drew. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that could could have been a yes grunt. You never know. <laughs> so, wait a minute. You you guys wrestle often. No, I mean, this is like maybe like a once a... Let me do this maybe. We wrestle once in a while, you know. Okay. Just like a little WWF stuff, you know. Right. So, who does the pile driver? I mm. kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Yeah. You're on the bed. He jumped on you. Yeah, I mean, except it wasn't just like no order and I jump. I mean, he freaking straddled me. 
Uh-huh. I mean, arms spread out, legs spread out. I mean, I couldn't get him off me. And he's like, ever since, you know, he's like made little remarks here and there, you know. It's not the first time something like this has happened. Like what kind of remarks? Like, I don't know, like he always talks about like, like he's like, he always acts like a fag, you know. I mean, he always like makes little fruity remarks like how, like, talks about guys and how good looking they are and stuff like that, you know. All right, Tom. I'm not sure if I should kick his ass for it or if I should just like let it fly. Tom, you try kicking his ass again, you may be pinned with his penis in your face before, <laughs> before you know it. Yeah. Tom, he already kicked your ass once. This time he may do it with his shorts down. Yeah. All right? I like what's happening in the studio and stuff. Yeah, you ever seen those prison movies? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big Bubba the Soap Dropper. That's right. All right. All right, Tom. All right, thanks a lot. Don't, don't wrestle with gay guys. Well, if, I don't know, man. You know, hey, I mean, you don't look gay or nothing, you know. All right, but now you know. All right. You get him excited. Okay? All right. Yeah. It's like, you know, like when you have a dog and the dog's real horny. You don't sit there and rev him up before company comes over because <laughs> uh, Aunt Gertrude comes in, the dog's humping her leg. <laughs> you don't need that, Drew. No, don't need that. Some of, these, some of these questions are just basic common sense type question. Brendan, 20, you're on Loveline. Uh, all right, how's it going? Whoa. Good. Why don't you exhale? <laughs> wow. Here's my question for you. Oh, wait a minute, Brendan. Yeah. Give us that pot smoker's laugh. Oh, no, I don't do that anymore. Really? Well, I'll give you a laugh. Okay. Well, that last guy, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> That's good. There's, there's, a, there's a future in radio with this guy's IQ. And yeah, when he said he doesn't do that anymore, I think he was talking about this weekend. <laughs> no, are you kidding? He's yeah. talking about noon. <laughs> there's still smoke coming out of the bong, by the way. No, don't do it. Right. You, you don't do it because you can't score, or you gave it up? Um, I gave it up. Okay. That's too much. That means you got busted. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, my question is, when, you, when you're when you dating a girl, and uh, before you have sex with her, if you riddle and think about her, and then she just breaks up with you, I want to uh, know... Wait a minute, you riddle? It's yeah. a riddle. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. With her in your mind? You do what with her in your mind? Masturbate. Oh, that's riddle? Yeah. Wow. wow. Riddle. You guys are... New word. Come on, I knew that. You guys aren't hip to that? No. I... You guys over in hey, Amsterdam. Hey, they don't Beavis and Butthead, I miss it. <laughs> Yeah, we're all old farts over here, Brendan. We're, we don't know about this riddling. You've all riddled, though, right? I thought it was like corralling the tadpole or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, through, so. <laughs> yes, I have done my own form of riddling for many a year, although I never knew it was actually riddling. Uh oh. All right, but anyway, so you riddle before? You, before you have sex you're with the girl you're dating. Right. But then it never happens. Uh huh. I, I believe it's some kind of phenomena, <laughs> kind of like morning wood. So, you, you, all right, all right. So you're saying you you sort of jinx yourself by riddling beforehand. Exactly. Some kind of voodoo experience. All right, but this <laughs> this how old are you, Brendan? Twenty. Amazing. Yeah, he put a curse on a schlong. In other words, <laughs> right. should be a thir should yeah, be in senior yeah. in college. Brendan. Yeah. Listen. This is what people think about when they're in college. It's, it's the riddler, Brendan. Listen. Here's the deal. And I can explain this. This is uh, this is nothing uh, paranormal here. This is this is how we. See, this is how you work. This is how scientist minds work. That's how mine. Oh, oh, I'm watching. Oh yes. Oh yes. Please listen up. I'm in awe. Uh, let me explain what happens. Oh, yeah, Brendan please. feels like because he riddled, he put some sort of curse on his right. penis. Therefore, he jinxed the whole sexual experience. But here's what I'm going to say, because of my years of clinical experience. Yeah. <laughs> the riddling got rid of the will. He left the will in the hamper, is basically what I'm saying. When when he riddled off, he took the inspiration for sex, the will for sex, the need to have sex, and he put it on a gym sock. What this is is a case that was exemplified in the superstitious pigeon. Huh? In the Skinner box, you know, the pigeon would do, go through certain procedures and would learn to get a, a food delivered to him. Well, if they, if they just delivered the food at random intervals, the pigeon would start believing that whatever behavior he was doing at the time when the food delivered was what caused the food to be delivered. So ah. the pigeon would start going through all these rituals to try to get the food to be delivered, but it would still just be random events. And the pigeon believed that it was making the food be delivered by doing these random acts. Uh, who's smarter, Brendan or the pigeon? Am I the pigeon? Absolutely. They, oh. they, it'd be a head-to-head -head match here, I think. No, but no, I still go for it fully. Tell them they're beautiful the whole nine. The pigeons? Uh, the pizza. Brendan. <laughs> Whatever's being delivered. Listen, Brendan, listen to me. First off, it's late. I don't know why he ever gave up pot. It certainly has to <laughs> sped up. Brendan, listen. Here's the deal. If riddling is causing you not to close the deal sexually, then stop 
whacking off before you go out on dates. So, so you're not saying it's a phenomenon? Oh, for Christ's sake. Let me tell you, if that happened to me once, that'd be it. There'd be no more riddling going on. There'd be no pre-date riddles. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Riddle me this. That's right. It does not take a rocket scientist to figure this out. You you ruin the whole impetus or the whole. Yeah, your but he whole, just he doesn't even say it's somebody he's dating. It's just somebody he thinks of and wishes to be with and never gets to because he thought of her when he was riddling. Uh, it's yeah, the really Skinner. Really it's the Skinner box. Yeah, yeah. let's get out. Let's, let's listen to some. All right, all right. Enough. <laughs> I I need some therapeutic release here. Yeah, but uh, it's nice that you uh, participate in the show for a second, Victor. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we have a song called "Violent Pacification." Yeah. Does will, that basically uh, it say spawn, it all? I think it will spawn much riddling. It will. <laughs> you guys won't be offended if I uh, put a little extra frosting on the cake? Well, <laughs> you can do that in the other room, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Carrie. How do you spell your name? Let me see if I can work something out for you. <laughs> okay. I've offended Slayer, which is no easy task, by the way. <laughs> all right. So, violent pacification. And take a listen. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Well, that's the last of the frost and Drew. Slayer, undisputed attitude, violent pacification on sale starting tomorrow. And we'll be back to wrap things up after this. Thomas Calabro tomorrow night. You know him as Dr. Mancini from Melrose Place, so we'll uh, talk to him and find out why he acts so much better than the rest of the cast. No phone numbers, no fax numbers. Uh, just time for one more real quick call because Ann demands it, and she threw this party for me. John, 16. Hey, dude, what's up? Hey, what's uh, up with you? I want to start off by saying your guys' show is pretty badass, and Slayer's not so bad here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, dude, it's not really a problem. It's more like an ego thing, but... uh. I've been going off with my girlfriend for a couple months, and we, when we have sex, like, I get into the foreplay, right? And when I go down on her, I, like, eat her out for, like, an hour straight. Right. And after she has, like... Second problem is your penis is so big, you can't fit it into the bedroom, exactly. so you guys are forced to have sex out in the desert. So, I gotta settle with a blowjob, but uh, yeah. I ain't complaining about that. Thing. No. No, it's, it's rough when you're hung and you go down on women for an hour. You want to give your phone number out real quick, John? Uh, for what? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and let me explain something. You're down there for what you think is an hour. It's really like, you know, it's like dog years. You know what I'm saying? Dog's only seven, but he's really 75. <laughs> <laughs> you're down there for, you're down there for like two Slayer songs, but you think you've been down there for, for Inagata De Vida and Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> That's how long it is. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? <laughs> All right, we got to wrap things up. I really want to thank Tom and Carrie from Slayer for coming in tonight and being such uh, such good guys and uh, helping out and being a barrel of laughs. I want to uh, force everyone to buy Undisputed Attitude, which goes on sale tomorrow. Get out there and get that. Uh, Dr. Drew? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely Ann, thank you very much for throwing this beautiful party for me. It was from everybody, by the way. Oh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> yes. Mm, all right. Uh, Lisa and Sherry, thanks for doing a great job on the phones tonight. The One Nut Wonder, Engineer Mike, doing a adequate job tonight, engineering the show, if you too. And I'd like to thank myself for coming in here and doing a fine job. I hey, you know what? I got a question. Go I'm ahead. Just on this airplane, I forgot which one it was. But they serve this thing called pine nut balls. What the hell is that? Uh, I don't know, but somewhere there's a bear limping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to say hi to the KJEE guys from Santa Barbara. <laughs> Came all the way out here, the morning team, just to say hi to their fans, hi. Slayer. They are dedicated and also have no luck. <laughs> so we're out of time. We will see everyone tomorrow night. If you are still listening, you may feel the urge to touch yourself. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.